House of the Dragon Season 1 Episode 7 just brought us our largest change from the source material that we've seen so far. Fire and Blood dictates that Laenor Valerion dies in the year 120 AC. He is killed in a fight with his lover, Carl Cory. However, as we see in Episode 7 of Season 1, this is not the case. Damon and Rhaenyra want to marry, and in order to do this without any obstacles, they have Carl and Laenor fake their own deaths and ride off in a ship to Essos, where they might be more accepted and be able to fight on their own terms rather than being shackled by the political arrangements of Westeros. I was really happy when this happened. It's great to see a good ending to a character that I thought just seemed like a genuinely nice guy. And I'm excited to see whether or not he'll reappear in the future. But that brings me to the topic of today's video. Regardless of what happens to Laenor, it is going to mean big changes for the future of House of the Dragon and its relationship to the source material. And today, I'm going to dive into a few of the reasons that I think that could be, as well as a few possibilities as to exactly what those changes might be. If you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. That always helps the channel out. I've really appreciated all the support lately. And yeah, we'll jump into the potential theories as to what may happen with Laenor and Sea Smoke in the future. I will also mention that some of these uh, theories might have spoilers relating to the books. However, I will save those ones till the end of the video so you will be able to watch most of this and still be unspoiled. I'll let you know when those are going to come up. I'll explain a bit of what the main complication here is for those who might not know. So Lenor is leaving behind his dragon, Sea Smoke. We saw it primarily in episode 3 where he was burning down the fleets in the uh, Sep Zones fighting against the Crab Feeder. And Sea Smoke is not going to be able to come with Lenor because that would be quite obvious that it was Lenor if Sea Smoke were to come with him because there are not very many dragons left in the world. Sea Smoke will thus be left behind and Lenor will presumably still be alive in Essos, which is interesting. Because as far as we know, dragons can only bond to one human at a time. A dragon might bond to multiple humans over the dragon's lifetime. However, we've never seen a case of a dragon bonding to another human while its initial human rider is still alive. And that is where some of the interesting implications come in. So, going to the future possibilities as to what is going to potentially happen to Lanor and to Sea Smoke. Option A is the simplest and would be requiring the fewest changes from Fire and Blood. That being that Lanor simply dies over the seven years that are going to intervene between uh, episodes seven and eight. It's quite possible. Uh, they said that there is some fighting going on in Essos at this point. So there is definitely a conflict in which he could die. Uh, and this would very much clear the way for events to happen as they do in Fire and Blood going forward. However, I'm not sure that this would be a great uh, path for them to go, particularly in the narrative elements of the story itself. In that we've developed Lenor thus far, he's been in a lot of the episodes so far this season, we've seen him grow, and I quite like him as a character. And I feel like the change from him dying to him just being off in another continent and killed during a time skip would be pretty negligible at this point, and I feel like they might not go through the work of keeping him alive if it were for nothing. Option B is that Lenor never appears again, but remains either alive or his fate is unknown. This is tricky for the reason I mentioned earlier, particularly that we are going into a period of conflict here, as is evident based on the everything about this series, and dragons may be claimed. Should sea smoke be claimed, that might change a lot about what we know regarding the dragon bonding process and how that relates to humans. Dragons might not need to have their rider die in order to take a new rider. I think this would make sense in that I don't think that that mystical connection will be able to survive a continent away. Or perhaps it does. That would still be interesting to see. Uh, and I think it would be cool to have that element of dragon lore that we've all taken for granted for so long turn out to be false, because I think that really reinforces how the knowledge here is so lost since Valyria died out long, long ago that we might not know everything that we think we know about dragons and their bonding processes to humans. Option C is that Lenor would return sometime in the future and fight on behalf of Rhaenyra in this upcoming conflict. This would make complete sense given the context of the show right now, as he obviously cares for her at the very least as a close friend, and would likely wish to aid her should a conflict break out. The main detractor from this point is that it would go directly against the source material, Fire and Blood, dictates, which is that Lenor is never seen again after Daemon and Rhaenyra are wed. 
This in itself is already a deviation in that he is alive and we know that. However, Fire and Blood by its nature is a history text and might not be correct on everything. There's a chance that Lenor is still alive in the books. There's just no, they just didn't know about it at the time. Maesters and Mushroom just had not heard that. Uh, so this definitely is a possibility. However, I would think of it as probably the least likely of all of the possibilities I've listed so far. However, not quite as unlikely as D is, but D is going to get fully into spoiler territory. So if you're not ready for that, buckle up or just skip the section. I'll leave a time code in the description. Option D is by far the most out there of these theories, but I have a soft spot for it because it's so out there. I tend to like that kind of theory. Uh, and I, I quite enjoy this one specifically. There's a character who comes about partway through the dance known as Adam of Hull, a bastard of House of Valerion, though it is not quite clear who his father may be. Might be Corlys, most commonly is attributed to Laenor. However, Laenor is not able to conceive any children even within his marriage to Rhaenyra, which makes me very much doubt the fact that he would have an illegitimate child outside of that. Adam shows up and lays claim to Sea Smoke, who is the dragon of Lenor, at least when Lenor was alive. He then goes on to fight on behalf of the Blacks quite lo loyally throughout the entirety of the war. My thought is that what if in the show they change it to be so that Adam is Lenor in disguise. He returns from Essos having disguised himself, either having shaved his head as he did at the end of this episode, or with some other disguise or scarring that might have occurred over the six years that he's been gone, or seven years by the time Adam shows up. This could be quite interesting and it could be a cool way to reinsert Lenor into the story as I really enjoy his character and I'd love to see more of him, though I don't think it is the most likely by any means. I think that it is much more likely that maybe the bond between Lenor and Sea Smoke would just fade over time with Lenor absent. However, I do think it's a pretty distinct possibility, especially given the questions regarding Adam's parentage and the general mysterious nature of these dragon seeds that exist on Dragonstone. I think it could make a lot of sense if Lenor is the one to claim his dragon that he's been away from for so long. Another main detracting point from this in the book is that Adam of Hull is 16 years old in the book, which Lenor is far older than, uh, even now in the show. However, my main thought on that is that a lot of the ages have been kind of messed with in the show already. All the kids are different ages than they started the dance with. Or at least uh, Rhaenyra's kids are. Allison's kids are pretty close. So I do think there's a chance they mess with that age a little bit. Or, and either age Adam up or he's Lenor and he is older. But yeah, I thought that was a really interesting theory and I did want to share that. As while it is kind of wild and out there, it would be quite cool if it happened. And I think there is some pretty decent uh, evidence regarding the fact that it could happen, given the fact that Lenor, as last we've seen, is alive and could potentially reclaim his dragon. As far as these theories go, I would love to see any of them but A play out, as A is a bit boring. B would change the way we see the relationship between dragons and humans, much for the better, and add complicated layers to it that I would really enjoy exploring. C would involve changing a lot of material from fire and blood, and that would be quite interesting to see the ways in which it is changed and diverts from the source. And D is so far out there that it would just be entertaining to see. And plus that would mean we get to see more Lenor in the last two of those, and I would be quite happy for that because I really enjoy his actor for the last two episodes, and I hope we get to see more of him in the future. But yeah, these have been the theories. Uh, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think of these, and if you think there's any alternative possibilities that he could end up doing, or you think one of these is more likely than others. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a nice day.